All right, so not too long ago, we took a look at the RTX 3060 along with an 11400. It's an Intel Core i5 um, 11th Gen 6 core 12 thread CPU. And I got to thinking. Now, I did realize that that RTX 3060, when I got it, I compared it to the 2070, the previous generation, a little bit higher model. They're very close in, in uh, how they act. But I didn't really consider the processors that I started testing with. And now that I've started testing the GTX, I mean the RTX 3060, I kind of wondered if the the performance of a similar 6-core would live up to the Intel. So today we're taking a look at the Intel 11400 versus Ryzen 5 5600. Now, I know this doesn't really sound exciting, and it may not be. Uh, both of these, I, I chose both of these for a reason. Uh, both of these are the step down from the high, uh, how best to explain this? That's six core, 12 thread for both platforms. Uh, Intel's 1200 pin and the AM4 platform on the AMD side. Both of them are that the middle tier with six core, 12 thread, but they are not the best six core, 12 thread that you can get from either company for their generation. Both of these are the previous board generation. So now AMD has an AM5 platform. I'm looking at the AM4. Intel has the 1700 pin. I'm looking at the 1200 pin. In this case, it's 10th and 11th gen Intel versus basically a Zen 3 uh, CPU from AMD. Now, the reason I did choose this is because I was looking at the 5600 before to find out how it would compare to something like, you know, a 3600X or a 3700X, etc. Uh, we, we haven't really got a chance to test the, G, the RTX 3060 with these, but I figured while I've got this set up, I can take a look and see how both of these 6-core 12 threads do against each other. What could it lose, right? So, what, it really is a little bit confusing, though, which one to try to choose. Now, I happen to, when I set things up, I set up with a, a very, very, very different setup. I had 32 gig of memory and all that stuff with the 5600. So I've had to scale all that back. It originally had the RX 6600X, X, uh, RX 6600XT from AMD in it as the video card, but that will be a further test. We will go ahead and test the RTX 3060 and the 6600XT later. But first I want to take a look at these two six cores. They're both similarly priced. I'm not going to say the same price. Intel is a little bit less expensive. The, it runs around 140, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less in some places, depending on where you get it. The AMD chip, the 5600 Ryzen 5, that runs usually in a 170 neighborhood, 168 to 173 or so. They're, and it sounds like, oh, well, that's a, you know, that, that's a no-brainer right there. Go with the Intel. Yes and no. If you go with the Intel, you also have to get a cooler because the cooler that does come with the Intel, we found out in a previous video, is not all it's cracked up to be. And in fact, it did cause some heat problems and a little bit of thermal throttling when I was trying to run some CPU tests. So if you spend 20 or 25 or $30 on a good cooler, a decent cooler, then right away, we're, we're right back in that same ballpark. You can find similar motherboards. I tested, I went ahead and redid the configuration to match these as close as I could by using a B560 and a B550. The B550, of course, on the AMD side, the B560 on the Intel side. Both of these run in 16 gig of memory, both of them at similar speeds. Try to make it as, as close as I could to being even so I could test these two and see where they went, you know, kind of head to head. And if there was a choice to be made, if you were looking I don't know, say you had a little bit older platform and you weren't ready to move up to the, the latest and greatest and, and whatever was top on the market now, but you were looking for something in the middle. Affordable computer for you know anywhere from $800 to $1,000? Maybe you're looking at a 6-core 12 thread and maybe you're looking at something like an RTX 3060 or even that 6600 XT we'll look at later. So I started looking at these and, and I already had some benchmarks from when I was doing before. I did test this with the RTX 3060. Figured we'll leave the, the same G, we'll leave the same graphics card just to make things easier. And we're only looking at these CPUs on 1080p. Now the reason why we're doing this, we're not looking at them at 1440p and 1080p because 1440p, the GPU, the graphics card is doing most of the work. 
If you go to a lower resolution, the graphics card has an easier time. That means the central processing unit has to do most of the work. That gives us a little bit better idea how they compare to each other if the graphics card is doing the same amount of low detail work. Hey, I'm just chilling out. You guys do the work and that way we can measure them against each other a little bit easier. We start out like we always do with Shadow of the Tomb Raider and you can see that there's just a little bit of an edge to the, the 5600, which is the Ryzen 5, just a little bit. Is it worth $20 worth of edge? I don't know. We'll find out. Borderlands 3, you can see just a little bit of a difference. Statistically, at 1080p high, it's the same. It does make a little bit of a difference as we get down the stack a little bit. But still, is it enough where you're really going to notice it? If it's getting over, over, over 100 frames per second, you're probably not going to notice it. Far Cry 5 is a little bit newer title. It should be optimized. Um, it's basically, statistically, these are they're the same. You know, if you're talking about... 125 or 130 frames per second that's that's almost too close to call three and a half percent or so that's that's almost within the range of margin of error so i i don't really know if you can call this a clear win for amd forza horizon 5 is a statistical dead heat i mean both of these guys are within obviously they're within margin of error the amd does slide ahead just a little bit still again but is it enough to make a difference World War Z, same thing as, far, as uh, Forza Horizon 5, just not enough. It's a little bit, but it's not enough to make you make a decision. And uh, I, I can't see where it makes me want one over the other one, quite frankly. Horizon Zero Dawn is where it starts to take a little bit, and you might notice a little bit of a difference. Might. Then again, you might not, because let's face it, 7% on high, or 65 or 7% on high is really not that much. And by the time you get to low, you know, you're still, no, you're probably not going to. It is, the, the AMD is a little bit better here, but it's still not enough to call it a clear outstanding victory. It's just not far enough ahead to do that. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, this is an AMD sponsored title, and it shows that it's a little bit better. Uh, but 10% better, again, is that enough to make you go, no. Nah, I don't want, is it is it 10% better across the board? No, it's in one or two games. And even though AMD has, has held the lead pretty much all the way across here, still, it makes you wonder. If you already have an Intel or already have an AMD, is that the route you're going? Cyberpunk 2077. Again, it's this is going to be very similar to the last ones. A little bit of a lead for AMD. Not really falling behind in Intel. So, again, we're stuck with the same thing. Just barely statistically out of margin of error for AMD. And then finally, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This might be one of those things, if you like to play eSports, and you like to play eSports at a high frame rate, and you're very competitive at a high frame rate, either on 1440, 1080, especially on 1080p, this starts to make a big difference. When you're getting into the range where you're making... 15, 18% difference, 10 or 15% difference or whatever on an eSports title, that might make a very big difference. And I would not say that's this big of a deal going from, say, 400 to almost 500 or, you know, 475 or whatever. But now you've got monitors that are getting up into the 360 hertz range, the 540 hertz range. Who knows, within a couple of years, we might be getting monitors that are, you know, 720 hertz. So when you have something that makes this big of a difference in a game like Counter-Strike, which is an esports title, you might also have that same difference when you're playing games like Fortnite and some of these others that are really CPU intensive at those 1080p resolutions. Would not have made a difference, say, two years ago. But now with faster refresh rates on monitors, maybe it is starting to make a difference. So maybe that is something to make you kind of lean toward it. If you're big into esports, the AMD might be the way to go. Finally, the only other thing that I can think of that might sway me is if I already have something on the AM4 platform. Say I'm, I'm upgrading from a, I don't know, maybe I've got a 3300, a 3300X, or maybe I've got a 3600 or 3600X, or maybe I'm still rocking a 2600X or something. Um, maybe I've got a, 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 who knows? Those motherboards still will support the AM4 motherboards. If I've got an older Ryzen CPU, will take 
this newer, not new, but newer AM5 or AM4 Ryzen 5 six core 12 thread and it does make a big difference the, the make no mistake about it this 5600 is faster than the 3600 before it which is faster than the 2600 x or 26 or 2600 x before it so you have a measurable difference there and maybe that is enough to sway because the other drawback with intel in this case even though they're similar price and if you're starting from scratch you might you know might just go ahead either one of them but if you're already invested in an amd i would probably stay there and the one other reason is because intel this board style with the 1200 pins 10th generation and 11th gen there's some caps to these the 11900 or 11900k is the highest cpu you can get on the 11th gen boards or the boards that are capable of holding 10 or 11th gen the 11900K sounds great. Oh, it's an i9. It does sound great, but it's an 8-core 16-thread. You can get a 5950, a 5950X, or a 5800X 3D that are all superior to that chip. The 5800X 3D, by far, is superior to that chip. And both of them run PCIe Generation 4, which means your storage will be faster, your graphics card will run a little bit faster, but it's not going to max out the graphics card yet. Storage is a big thing, though, especially if you're trying to transfer data quickly or if you're using features like direct access memory that some GPUs are going to be using when they're going to go directly back to the SSD instead of trying to go through the CPU to get information. It's going to be much quicker on a much faster design than it would be if it has to go through a slower processor. And PCIe Gen 3 won't let you do that at all. That's the hang-up with the 10th Gen. A 10th Gen 10900K is also a good processor. However, it's 10 cores, 20, 10 cores 20 threads, but it's only PCIe Gen 3, which means you're not going to be able to get the fastest storage you can. You're not going to be able to get the full amount of bandwidth out of the graphics card, which, like I said, graphics card's not going to matter as much, but storage might, especially if you're using something like direct access memory in some games, or if you're taking advantage of that. Now, AMD calls it one thing, and uh, I think AMD calls it SAM, and, and uh, Intel calls it something else. It's the same thing. It's taking information, the graphics card is taking information directly off of your SSD to be able to render scale render models and all that stuff without having to go through your cpu it's much faster ideally it's much faster it will get much faster as we go up in generations of pcie in any case some of the limitations of that intel are that it only supports two generations where amd supported a lot and you're kind of stuck do i use something that's eight cores 16 thread and that's the most i can get out of it where i can get a lot more out of the amd or do i use more cores and more threads and I won't be able to use as quick a storage. That's got to be up to you. Pricing is going to be very close to the same. Those motherboards are going to be close to the same. You'll be able to use the same memory. You'll be able to use the same power supply, the same graphics card and everything. So really, it's kind of up to you. But eSports titles might help you make up your mind. Or if you're already rocking a previous generation AMD, maybe you can just move up to that 5000 and not have to worry about trying to buy a whole new setup. Uh, both of these are going to work on DDR4. Both of these are going to work with the same graphics cards and all that stuff. But uh, maybe, just maybe, if you've already got something with an AMD, that's where you ought to stick. And besides that, it's just a coin toss. You like the blue box or the, the gray and orange box? Who knows? Anyway, that's all I got this time. I thought this was going to be more groundbreaking than it was. And I thought one of them was going to pull ahead. And one of them was going to do a lot better. And I would find some, some game or two that really just was outstanding. And I didn't. Uh, they both came in. Both of these are fantastic. These are both. I mean, when you're gaming, especially at 10, 1080p, if you're gaming over 100 frames per second, I mean, it's smooth. It's fluid. It looks good. I mean, you can go up to 1440p, but that's a different video. But both of these CPUs, for the price, you can't beat them. And you don't have to buy a whole new platform right now unless you're starting from scratch and then i really really would recommend maybe looking at a b560 with that lga 1200 and going with uh, the intel unless you find a great deal on that am4 socket and you've already got some rising stuff going on you know might just be worth staying there 
Anyway, that is all I got. Like I mentioned, I am going to be I am going to be testing that uh, 6600 XT coming up. We'll do that against the RTX 30, uh, 3060. Do not know if that's going to be on Intel or an AMD. I don't know if it'll make much of a difference. I might do it on the AMD since that's the one that's on the test bench right now, and both of them are statistically very similar, uh, within almost within margin of error. So we really will get an idea of graphics card to graphics card, and that's where those you know. Uh, we'll see if there's any difference there. So again, we're looking at other things for that mid-range budget now. We're trying to fill out some of those, say, $700 to $1,000 PCs. So join me for that next time. Uh, don't forget to do all those uh, social things, you know, all the YouTube things, and hit me up on all the socials and all that stuff, like the video if you found it helpful at all, or just found it interesting, or because uh, it wasn't groundbreaking, but maybe it was interesting. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and don't forget, uh, if you don't do anything else, do one thing for me, and that's just be good to each other. Be nice, smile, wave, you know, hold the door open, something. Uh, you might find somebody else to do that to you, and it might just be a little bit day, a little bit better day for you, and for the person that you smiled and waved to or held the door open for. You never know, it can make a big difference. Something very, very small that you do can make a huge difference in somebody's life, and you might never know it. So take care of yourselves out there, folks, and until the next time, I'll see you later. <laughs>